Electricity is one of those things that people find tricky sometimes because it's quite conceptual. But by understanding just a few basic ideas, it all becomes very clear. Let's start with a battery. And a circuit and an ammeter in it as well. Now let's say that this battery says six volts. Now what on earth does that mean? Well, technically, we could say that voltage supplied is the same thing as something that we call electromotive force, or EMF for short. In other words, it's the amount of energy supplied to electrons. We know that if there wasn't a battery here, then electrons wouldn't be flowing around the circuit. But there is a battery which gives the electrons energy, and that enables them to flow around the circuit. But the thing is, is that we have billions of these electrons going around the circuit, so it's not very good to talk about the energy supplied to an individual electron. So we say energy supplied to one coulomb. Of electrons. Coulomb is the unit of charge. And it turns out that one electron has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So you can see that we need not only billions but trillions and trillions of these electrons to make up one coulomb of charge. That's why it's better to talk about coulombs and not the energy given to one electron. By the way, we call this E for short, little e. So here we said voltage supplied is the same thing as electromotive force, so I probably should say that epsilon there, that's our EMF, that's six volts. In other words, each coulomb is given six joules of energy. What about if I wanted to find out how much energy they lose when they go across this resistor? Here, I'm going to call that R. And I need a voltmeter. Voltmeters are always put across a component. That way, it can measure what we call voltage across resistor. That's also known as potential difference. PD for short. And this measures the energy lost by each coulomb of charge. So the electrons travel from here. We do say that current, conventional current goes around there. Conventional current goes from positive to negative. But actually electrons flow in the opposite direction. But that's just because they decided on conventional current before they knew that it was the electrons that moved. So here we have energy supplied to a coulomb of electrons, a coulomb of charge, by the battery here. And here our voltmeter is measuring how much energy the electrons, a coulomb of electrons, loses between entering and exiting the resistor. EMF, or voltage, or PD, is always equals to energy divided by charge we could call that energy or work done. If this battery is supplying the electrons with six volts worth of energy, that's six joules per coulomb, and there's nothing else in the circuit that would cause them to lose energy apart from this resistor, what reading should we expect to see on this voltmeter here? We should expect this to say six volts as well because they should be losing all of that six volts worth of energy in this resistor here and then flowing back to the other side of the battery ready to be filled up with energy again. Don't forget that in the circuit we just have one complete loop of electrons that are all flowing together like water being pumped around a pipe system. Now what we're going to find out a little bit later on that this probably isn't going to be 6 volts if the EMF of the battery is 6 volts and that's to do with something called internal resistance but we'll pretend that doesn't exist for now. So this is a really important equation here Voltage, PD, or EMF is equals to energy P unit charge. It's just telling you how many joules a coulomb of electrons, or generally a coulomb of charge, 
has. So if we have our circuit again here, we also had an ammeter in there as well. Now you should know that the more energy supplied to the electrons, the faster they're going to flow. So higher EMF, I'm gonna put brackets there for voltage as well, but technically we should call it EMF. The higher EMF equals electrons flow faster. And that's the same thing as a higher current. Oh, I can't spell today. If you replace this battery with a 12 volt battery, you would expect the electrons to flow twice as fast. And that is what we see, or we should see anyway. Current, we give the letter I. We don't give it the letter C because that's reserved for capacitance. So current is the rate of flow of charge. In other words, how fast the electrons are flowing. We're not saying how many electrons pass through the circuit every second. We talk about how many coulombs. So we say coulombs per second. So that means that current is equal to charge divided by time. So what should we expect to read on this voltmeter here? The potential difference across this resistor, that should be 12 volts as well because all the electrons should be losing all 12 volts worth of their energy by the time they go through the resistor there. So if we draw a graph of voltage against current, and we're talking about voltage across this resistor here, then we should get a nice straight line like that because if we give the electrons more energy to lose across the resistor, that's a higher voltage, they should be flowing quicker through the resistor. So we have a constant, don't we? Our gradient is constant. That means that V divided by I is a constant for this resistor. And we call this constant resistance and that's where our equation v equals i r comes from and that is ohm's law we can think of resistance as how hard it is for current to flow through a component so the higher the resistance the higher it is for current to flow in other words you need more energy a higher voltage or higher emf to push the electrons through. If I was to draw a resistor that had a higher resistance on here, then they would have a steeper gradient. But for an individual resistor, we should have a straight line on a VI graph. What is the unit for resistance? We could use volts per amp, because of course the unit for, for voltage is volts, the unit for current is amps, but it has its own special unit, and that is the ohm and it's a capital omega, which is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. Now we talked about energy being lost across a resistor. Where does the energy actually go? Well, in a resistor, electrical energy is turned into heat. Simple as that. Whenever you have a resistor and you have electrons flowing through it, they lose their energy. They still flow out to the battery to be refilled with energy again, but they lose their energy as they go through and it's lost to heat. Resistors heat up. If you wanted to find out the energy lost every second, this is the same thing as power. Power is just the amount of energy, the number of joules lost every second. I can write out the unit joules per second, or I can write it like this. That's going to be V times I, voltage times current. But we also know that V equals IR. So if we substitute this into here, we end up with the power dissipated in a resistor is equals to the current squared times the resistance. Now we said just now that a VI graph for a resistor is nice and straight. That means that we have a constant R, constant resistance. So therefore we say it's ohmic. But not everything acts like this. What about if we had a bulb instead or a lamp? That's how we draw it in a circuit cross in a circle. Now with the lamp, what we see happening is it starts off straight, but then it starts to curve upwards like that. What's happening? The gradient is increasing with the current. So the resistance is increasing. And this is because the filament in the bulb is heating up. And that means that the particles in the metallic structure of the filament are actually vibrating more, which means that the electrons are colliding 
with the ions more, which makes it harder for it to flow. So this happens with pretty much any piece of metal. We see the resistance increasing when you get to higher currents. Incidentally, this shows that a resistor isn't made out of metal. It's actually made out of a semiconductor. What else do we have? We have thermistors, we draw that like this, and LDR, that's a light dependent resistor. Now with LDRs and thermistors, they will actually be ohmic at the same temperature or light level respectively. So if a thermistor is at the same temperature, then it will be ohmic. If an LDR is has the same amount of light falling on it, then it will be ohmic. However, that does change with temperature and light level. If you expose a thermistor to a higher temperature, this graph actually goes down. What's happened? Its resistance has decreased. It's the same thing with an LDR. If you give it more light, its resistance decreases as well. So when we have a low temperature or low light, a thermistor or an LDR's resistance will be high. But when we have a high temp or high light, there's a low resistance. This is going to be really important later on when it comes to potential dividers. And we have one more component. Now, what's weird is that we actually draw it the other way around in this case. We have voltage on the bottom and we have current on the y-axis there. Notice that we've got a positive and a negative voltage. This is for a diode. And we draw a diode like this. Incidentally, if this is an LED, then it would be the same as the diode. But if we just draw a diode, it's just the arrow and the line there. The symbol for a diode should imply how it's special. It's special because if you try and send current one way through it, so you apply a voltage across it in one direction, it will have zero current. Current will not flow in one direction. And then as soon as you hit the right voltage in the right direction, then current will flow very easily. So here we have very high resistance in one direction, and we have very low in the other. None of these components here mind which way you put them around in a circuit, but diodes are very specific. If you put them the wrong way around in a circuit, this here usually is about one volt when current starts to flow. So that's our VI graphs for all of the components that we need to know for GCSE and A-level. So I hope that helps. If you've got any questions or if you feel I've missed anything out, then please put in a comment down below and I'll see you next time.